From Hollywood, it's time now for... Hello? Johnny Dollar. Uh, Johnny? You sound surprised, Jan. Well, uh, yes, I am, dear. I thought you were going over to police headquarters. I changed my mind. Then you didn't need my car, after all. No. Are you coming back here to my apartment? Johnny? After I take a little walk. As I told you, I've got to think this case out, and I can't very well do it wrapped up in your arms. Well, can I? Why don't you take a drive along the shoreline in my car? Want to come along? Jan? I'll, uh, I'll wait for you here. Yeah. See you in a little while. Much sooner than you think, baby. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location San Diego, California. To Universal Adjusters Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Jolly Roger fraud, including the loss of a palatial yacht and a couple of murders. Expense account item 12, phone call. And one thing I didn't tell Jan Penny was that I was calling her from a booth right on the ground floor of her own apartment building. Another was the reason I changed my mind about borrowing her car to drive to headquarters for a talk with Sergeant Franklin. Oh, I had gone out to the parking lot and climbed into her car, all right. But as I was about to insert the key to start it, I noticed the hood wasn't closed down tight. That saved my life. For wired to the ignition, I found a booby trap that would have blown me to kingdom come if I'd even turned the key. After hanging up on Jan, I hopped upstairs to her apartment and pressed an ear against the door. No, no, he didn't. Because he just phoned me from somewhere outside. But he said he's coming back here, and I tell you, you'd better come over here... No. No, he just said he's going for a walk. Of course I can handle. All right, all right. I went back to the first floor to the phone booth and called Sergeant Franklin. You think Jan Penny's in with Zanagin on this whole deal? Tell you this, I don't like what I think. Look, Sergeant, I'm going back upstairs to talk to her again. Uh, talk, did you say? Yes, talk. I'm going to lay it all out to her, tell her what I suspect and why. If I can break her down, okay. If I can't... Well, I misjudged her. Lucky stiff. Huh? I've seen her, Johnny boy. What's that supposed to mean? I hope you have misjudged her for your sake. What? Reconciliation. What a lovely way to spend the rest of the evening. Look, you dope. Go to it, boy. And happy hunting. Who is it? Johnny? Yeah. My, that was a short walk. But I'm glad. Are you? Or are you sorry I didn't stay away longer so you could get some help? Help? Sit down. Sit down, Jan. I want to talk to you. Oh, how masterful. Here? As you know, I didn't borrow your car after all. Sit next to me, darling, and let's continue from where we left Because off. fortunately, somebody goof left the hood partly open. Oh, sir, Johnny. That's why I discovered the booby trap that would have gone off as I turned the ignition key. Oh, sir, Johnny, I... Booby... What are you talking about? That's why you didn't hear the expected explosion right after I left you. Oh, no. Then they are after me, too. The warning over the phone. If I didn't stop helping you in this case, they... Oh, Johnny, what will I do? Johnny... For one thing, take your arms back to yourself what? and move over to your own corner of this couch so I can pull a gun if any of your pals... Oh, something... my dear Mr. Dollar. It's an alien. I fear it's too late. Artis here will pull the trigger if you so much as move a hand toward your gun. He's an excellent shot. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Awkward coming in the service entrance, but I was concerned lest your phone call in the lobby might have been to the police. Now, here now, permit me to take charge of your gun. Just a minute, Zanagin. I uh, sure. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yes, uh, this is Artis, the man I've had following you since your arrival here in San Diego. You don't recognize him, dear boy? Uh, I keep him from seeing me. He never know I follow him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Artis, you've been pretty good at it. But as long as we've been introduced now, why don't we shake hands? Go back, or I shoot. Oh, Andy Wood, my boy. 
And the, I believe you call it a silencer, would obviate any undue noise. Wouldn't you be happier if he did pull the trigger, Zanagian? But I wish to talk with you, dear Mr. Dahl. I don't think we have anything to talk about. Oh, but we have. You see, dear boy, I'm curious to know why you suspected Jan here of complicity in our little plan. Oh, uh, lovely girl, isn't she? Pretty obvious, isn't it? Now? Oh, forgive me. I realize in a situation like this, it is usually the detective, or in this case, the insurance investigator, who at the point of a gun extracts a confession from the, shall we say, criminal. (laughs) However... Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Apart from the threatening phone calls, which nobody but Jan seemed to know about... Terrible story for her to make up. You warned me in the beginning you'd have somebody tailing me while I was here in San Diego to make sure I didn't spoil your plan to collect some... 460,000 insurance on that yacht you burned and sank out near the Coronados? Quite right, quite right. Uh, But I must ask you to be brief in case that phone call you made was to the police. You see, with only Artis and Jan left of my staff and crew, I I can't very well afford to... Sure, that call was to the police. That's why I'm trying to stall you with a lot of talk. (laughs) Thank you. For if that were true, dear boy, you would never admit it. But do continue. All right. I've been followed before. I know, or at least I hope I do, every trick in the book for dodging a tail. Too good. Artis, you shouldn't admit he got away from you. Yeah, too good. But now I make him sorry. Artis, please. I wish to hear more from Mr. Dollar. And I wish to speak to him. As a matter of fact, dear Mr. Dollar, there is really no need for you to continue. You are a very intelligent young man. Oh, thanks. You realize that no one but our little Janet could have provided me with all the information I had. You're coming out here to investigate the sinking of the Jolly Roger. Your touching deathbed scene with Mr. Parker. Your conversations with Lieutenant Smith of the Coast Guard. And, oh, oh, she did dispose of him quite well, didn't she? Jan? Who else, Johnny? Who else could have run down Bird Parker without leaving him? Well, you ought to have your <laughs> neck. No, no, Artis, Artis, please. I wish to talk with Mr. Dahl. No wonder you insisted I drive your booby trap car tonight. Oh, really, darling, I'm glad that you didn't. Because if you'll listen... To yes, one... dear boy, listen to me. You are intelligent, as I said before. You even learned why I am in immediate need of funds so that I may finance a return to Europe and free the money of mine that has been frozen there. Millions, dear boy. And as the lovely Janet will attest, those who work with me, share with me. It's true, Johnny. Regardless of his reputation, when it comes to the people who will work with him... Like the crew of that yacht and whoever else was working with him? He admitted that only you and this trigger-happy character here were left... Oh, oh, tools, my dear boy. Quite unlike the the intelligent colleagues such as yourself and Janet, whom I wish to to keep close to me. Oh, artist boy, that means you better watch your step. What do you mean? Nothing, artist, nothing, nothing. My dear Mr. Dollar. Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. All I do is report that your claim should be paid, and I'm on your team. And you will never regret it. Not only money, more than you ever dreamed of, but... uh, Janet, Janet, my pearl, you do like our Mr. Dollar, do you not? You dirty rotten. Oh, get by. You admit you sank the Jolly Roger yourselves and again. Yeah, but of course. And all the men who went down with it. Uh, what had to be done? Even a little to... cabin oh, boy. Oh, yes, yes, dear boy, yes. Both he and the crew on the Jolly Roger were in danger of upsetting my plans. They had to be eliminated. But you, dear man, please, do not stand in my way. Much as I like and respect you, if you do, you will leave me no choice but to eliminate you. Even as I had to rid myself of Parker, the Lieutenant Smith, the cabin boy... Look, son, again. What if I were to say, okay, I'll go along with you? Uh Uh-huh. To say the least, it would get me out of this present pickle I'm in. Uh Ah, and much more. I still wish that gorilla of yours would aim his gun the other way. Oh, Artis, I think you might relax a bit for the moment. But I watch him. Go on, dear boy. Okay. What kind of assurance do you think you'd have that I wouldn't double-cross you? Uh, There is the factor of fear. Fear? Oh, my dear, dear man, don't you see? The choice is as simple as this, and the choice is yours. You either accept my offer now, or you accept a bullet from artist gone. And the latter I would regret exceedingly. Not only because of you, I like you. 
but because it would mean temporary interruption of my plans. A quick trip across the border to avoid being found when your body is discovered, and, and the necessity of devising some other means for attaining passage to Europe. But far more formidable problems have been overcome many times. Dear Mr. Dollar, I do not wish to have to discuss this further. So tell me... Sanagian, I have good news. Yes? For me, not for you. You mean you refuse? No, dear boy... No, I mean you aren't going to have to discuss this any further. You won't be able to. But, my dear... Much as I'd like to tie up this case with a big fancy ending, a real dramatic tagline... I do not understand you, All of your long-winded confession a minute ago might just as well have been stated in court. What? As a matter of fact, you'll probably hear it in court, word for word. I do not understand. You and this homely trigger man of yours aren't the only ones who know about the service entrance to this apartment. Wallace! What do you mean? You may as well give up quietly because the gentleman standing in the doorway directly behind you... No! Sergeant Franklin of the San Diego... Oh, no, you don't, Artis. I don't want to do it. Help, help, please. Do not hurt me. Help, please, please. Thanks, Sergeant. What a mess. Better tie up this gorilla, boys. I'm glad you took the hint and came over. You know my call was being listened to. Oh, I kind of thought so. Well, no more is an egg in. Dead? Yeah. By a slug from this big monkey's gun. If I'd known he was that bad a shot, I might have tried to jump him earlier. Come on, Artis. Up. up. After the way you hit him, he'll sleep for a long time. Well. Johnny. Huh? Johnny, listen to me. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Expense account item 14, 217.50, hotel in San Diego, incidentals and plane fare back to New York and Hartford. Expense account subtotal 523.23. I'll give you the rest when I finish my vacation in La Jolla, the one you promised me. Remarks? The fabulous crooked empire of Paulus Zanagian is kaput, the same way it happens with every man who tries to break the rules of international law and order. You might almost have called it death by his own hand. Though, of course, little Artie will be made to pay for it. Jan, same thing, I guess. Uh, why do they do it? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's exciting story. Next week, Vacation. And a beautiful romance that turned out to be a prelude to murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Heard in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Forrest Lewis, Paul Fries, Jay Novello, Harry Bartell, Don Diamond, and Victor Perrin. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking.